Dus. Tess? Ja. Top. Dan kunnen we in ieder geval naar de tijd om wat uh, bij elkaar in de boot. Ook maar gewoon. Yes. If everyone could uh, take a seat, please. I see some people still standing in the back. All right. Well, welcome everyone to this lecture uh, by Rijksvastgoedbedrijf. I hope you all have a sandwich, something to drink. Uh, and yeah, I would say enjoy. Ask questions if you have uh, uh, any. And uh, I'll give the word to uh, Tara from uh, Rijksvastgoedbedrijf. Yes, thank you, Max. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me here. Uh, good to be here. Uh, ooh. I think I have to stay here. Uh, because the box is over there, yeah. Okay, then I'll stay here. <laughs> um, welcome at this talk of the Central Government Real Estate Agency, or Rijksvastgoedbedrijf, or RVB, even more short. I will use all the terms during the presentation, so please don't be confused. Rijksvastgoedbedrijf, RVB, Central Government Real Estate Agency. Welcome. When I was asked for this talk, it got me thinking. When I was a student myself, it is roughly 10 years ago, I was studying urban planning at the University of Amsterdam. I never, ever had heard of the Rijksvastgoedbedrijf. So I'm rather curious, who of you knew our organization before taking an interest into this talk? Oh, well, that's, oh, that's quite a lot, actually. Cool. And how do you know us? I'm asking yeah, you with the green vest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, your dad works at the Rijksvastgoedbedrijf or at the central government? The central government and he's yeah, public care. Ah, cool. Oh, cool. Great. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. So today I'll tell you more about our organization. Well, actually, I have a little video doing the bigger part of that uh, for me. I'll tell you more about my colleagues, about the ambitions we have. But the focus of my talk will be on sustainability and energy transition. Uh, first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Tara Dekker. I work as a project manager in the land leasing division of our organization. And the core uh, business of my work is making governmental lands available for energy, tra energy transition, so for solar parks and wind farms. Uh, we'll dive into that later, but first I want to share two things uh, about my job with you. Okay, this is working great. Um, when you work at a big real estate organization, and especially a governmental one, you just know, come to know a lot of fun and trivial facts about weird places in the Netherlands. So for example, here you see me walking on the beach of Rocagne, and at the picture in the back you see three windmills. Uh, these windmills are standing on a dike, and this dike is owned by the central government, so the windmills are actually a project of one of my colleagues. Um, but this dike, um, uh, is protecting a very big depot with contaminated dredge. So we really don't want that one to spill over. But that's not even the most interesting part of this location. That is that the depot is, has a big surface of water on top of it. And on that water surface, we are planning one of the biggest floating solar plants uh, in Europe. And that's a project I'm working on myself. I want to share something I'm very proud of with you as well, and that's on the map you see on your left, I believe. Um, in 2018, I started talking with the Ministry of Economic Affairs and with Rijkswaterstaat about how we could make more governmental land available for energy transition. And after a lot of talking and discussion, we started with a program with 10 pilot locations, 10 pilot projects. And now this program is growing with 35 more new projects. And I'm rather proud of working on something that started with a lot of talking and uh, some small projects to begin with and now is growing to a steady program with 35 more projects and maybe even more coming up. Because what we want to do is we want to help every municipality with their own energy, energy, energy transition um, in the Netherlands. So I'll tell you more about this project and how we do that later on. But first, I have a question for you to contemplate on during the rest of my talk. And that question is, if I could create Europe's first and longest solar highway, so a highway with a lot of solar panels everywhere you can, you can think of, uh, I would definitely do, or my priority would be. So what would be on top of your mind if you were, were, were a project manager or a technical manager in, one, in a project like this? 
what would be your focus point? And we'll get back to that one uh, later. So Rijksvastgoedbedrijf, who we are, um, means I'm going to start in a little video. Um, hopefully that will. We are the central government real estate agency, the biggest real estate organization in the Netherlands. With some 83,000 hectares of land, almost 12 million square meters of buildings and a wide variety of clients. We maintain and manage prisons, palaces, government offices, barracks, museums, courts, nature areas and agricultural land. Our 2,900 employees range from technicians and architects to building engineers and real estate brokers and from project managers to ecologists. Together we create environments that are inspiring, sustainable and safe. Together with our partners in central government and elsewhere, we aim to use our land and buildings to help solve the issues facing society, like climate change and the energy transition, where we collaborate with the market and local partners to find local solutions. We're also making our real estate more sustainable. We renovate the buildings we own and refurbish them wherever possible with repurposed materials and green energy. That way we're leading by example. We are partnering with the Ministry of Defense to overhaul and update their real estate and develop a future-proof portfolio. Buildings and land that no longer fit our purpose are sold and repurposed for the benefit of society. For instance, as new homes. Our assets also include nature areas and agricultural land. We research ways of managing, using and conserving them sustainably and look at how to reduce nitrogen emissions. At the Central Government Real Estate Agency, we try to balance clients' interest with those of society. Finding that balance makes our work challenging, exciting and complex. We are the Central Government Real Estate Agency for a better Netherlands. So as you can see, we do a lot of different things from big renovations to selling former agricultural land near uh, Almere or Lelystad uh, in order for city development, from uh, regular maintenance to building new hangars for our Ministry of Defense. And we do that with quite a lot of different people as well. We are with 2,900 uh, employees working in our offices in Utrecht, The Hague, Assen, Den Helder, Arnhem, and here in Tilburg, close by. Um, so I'm rather curious who, who is in this hall with me. So what are, your, what are your studies and what is your specialization? Can you, can you tell me what you, what you study, yeah? Com computer science. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, we've got we've got like um, AutoCAD and BIM specialists working with us uh, as well. And of course, every organization nowadays needs people who are doing things like you uh, like you do. And what do you study? Wow. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if I can repeat that. <laughs> Real estate and urban, yes, urban, systems. urban systems and construction management. management and engineering. Cool. Wow. <laughs> that, that's a mouthful. But so um, uh, when I when I think about you, you can do two things within our organization. So first of all, we've got. Uh, uh, indeed, um, more the, the, the real estate advisors and asset managers working with us, but as well people who work in technical management and think about when we have to do a big renovation or renewal of, uh, of one of our offices or even an asset of the Ministry of Defense, how do we do that in a smart way and what, which technical solutions we need in those locations. Cool. And what do you do? Architecture, yeah. Are there more architects here? Architects here? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, cool, quite a lot. Cheers. <laughs> there are uh, uh, 
many architects working with us as well uh, in, an, in a role of, as architect, but also in a role of, te of technical manager, sustainable uh, uh, advisor, or even contract managers. I know people who studied architects, architecture and found out they rather do something like contract management, and uh, that's, uh, that's the thing uh, they do with us. So uh, quite a lot of different things, quite a lot of different people working with us. Um, that was more of the general part uh, on the Rijksvastgoedbedrijf of this presentation. If you have any questions about uh, the Rijksvastgoedbedrijf in general, please save them up for later. I'm here together with my colleague Mark. Hi Mark, can you wave? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll be here afterwards as well, as well. So if you have any questions, please come up to us uh, and, and ask them. Um, then I want to tell you something about our ambition. As you've seen in the video, uh, besides housing the central government, we also want to, do, uh, uh, want to do something for the Netherlands in general. We want to help the Netherlands be a little bit more green, better, social and sustainable. Uh, but doing so, we always do that with respect of our main task, namely housing the central government and its clients. The word client was used in the video as well, and when I first started working at uh, RVB, I was a bit confused by this word, client, what, what the hell do you mean with it? And that is actually the ministries uh, we house. So for example, the Ministry of Defense is our client, but also the Ministry of Justice is our client. We build their prisons and their courthouses. Um, so all their priorities we need to keep in mind when working on our projects and we have to keep in mind when thinking about uh, um, uh, doing something more for the Netherlands. Um, so that's what we never lose out of sight. Working in such a big organization with big ambition also, also means you have to be aware that anything you do can be made public or political very easily. So, for example, only recently we were in the NOS uh, news with the Binnenhof again uh, regarding the nitrogen deposition and the building permit. So, people working on those projects or working on any project of the central government means you have to be aware what uh, questions can be asked in the Tweede Kamer about my project or uh, what journalists will ask uh, uh, difficult questions to me. So, you need to be a little bit political sensible, sensible uh, when working with us. Um, regarding our social goals, our uh, minister, Hugo de Jonge at the moment, and our big boss, our director general, has identified um, a couple of uh, main social goals. And the first one is housing. Um, housing is something we can develop on locations we no longer use, for example, military airports uh, at Katwijk, uh, a military airport of Falkenburg is where we are re redeveloping for the housing, uh, but also on lands close to Almere and Lelystad. And in these projects, we take the role as, of a project developer. So together with the local municipalities, we work on the zoning plans, we work on the aesthetics in order to sell the locations to work project developers who really can build uh, uh, the new uh, parts of the city or neighborhoods there. Meanwhile, the lands are laying there empty. And uh, we want to do something with it during the pr um, uh, project development time as well. And for example, we can use them for uh, temporary housing of uh, special target groups or refugees. And in order to do so, we recently bought a big amount of flex houses. So houses we can easily build up on a location, but also can easily be teared down and set on, a net, on another project location we're developing at that time, or houses we can lend out to other municipalities or uh, uh, real estate owners. Another goal for us is sustainable agri agriculture. We have a lot of agricultural uh, land in our portfolio. Well, you might think, why? Uh, that is because Flevoland is the youngest province of the Netherlands and is still for a big part state-owned and Flevoland has a lot of agricultural land in it. Um, what we also do is working on the creation of new nature. We do that together with uh, the National Forestry Organization or Staatsbeheer in Dutch. And at last, we work on energy, tra energy transition or renewable energy. Um, and that's a bridge to the part on sustainability uh, of my presentation. 
Um, sustainability is really important. Sustainability has to be in our veins, I would say, because yes, we need to improve our buildings and installations. We need to get to energy level A. Um, yes, we need to change the energy mix of our, of our buildings. And yes, we need to get the nitrogen deposition down. And yes, circularity or uh, pre-used materials are also very important and is something where we want to be a role model in. So what we have given ourselves the task to, from next year on, be more strict in our building pre projects on the use of pre-used materials, even more strict than needed via the uh, building pyramids. And in that way, we really want to challenge the market to be more innovative um, in the use of uh, pre-used uh, materials and circularity. So hopefully we can get to zero emissions more fast. Another thing I want to highlight is uh, the use of wood. Uh, building with wood is something that's um, really um, coming more popular at the moment. We're also looking at this. And um, we had a uh, competition, an innovation competition within our organization. We have that each year. And recently, uh, this competition was won by a group of colleagues who had the idea of We Build Your Buildings by Plante u Panden in Dutch. It sounds a little bit better. And what they were thinking, why not use our own land to grow the wood needed for our own buildings? And it's really cool that uh, as an organization, we support innovative ideas Coming out, of our co coming out of colleagues or just people working with us who have a good idea, they can win the competition, get time and more money to think about uh, and to roll out their idea. So for example, Vai Plante u Panda is an idea of that and I'm really curious uh, when our first building uh, built with our own wood is, uh, is, is developed. Out of these, I want to highlight two things a little bit more in depth. And the first one is on energy uh, a crisis. Um, as, you might, as you might can imagine, our, not all our buildings are bank certified and not all our buildings have A++ energy labels. It is quite a challenge being such a big uh, real estate owner. We have 12 million square meters of buildings from different time eras, different maintenance levels. Um, so we can't have them all tomorrow um, uh, covered in solar panels and have uh, the newest installations and have the best isolation. So that's a long run to, to be more uh, sustainable. But we have an energy crisis going on right now. So we have to do something. Um, and uh, the European Union has asked us to be more, more, uh, more fast on this. So a team of my colleagues is working on getting our gas reliance down before the end of next March. Uh, it's quite a short time. Um, so the, down with 15%. And what they're doing is they're working closely together with our preferred suppliers on installations to see how to get this done. Um, first, uh, first thing to think about is putting the temperatures lower, but well, putting the temperatures lower in a lot of buildings <laughs> is also quite challenging uh, and won't help us because it will only uh, get us to half of the ambition of 15%. So there needs to be more done. And um, they're still, still working on ideas. One of the ideas is maybe even closing some of the offices on days when there are not many people working um, because people can work from home nowadays. So um, I'm really curious where they, where they will be at the end of March. Um, and if, if we get our target, and if not, yeah, probably they, you will hear it in the NOS news or there will be questions asked in, uh, in the Tweede Kamer, I can imagine. Um, another thing I wanted to highlight is the Portals Court ruling. I'm not sure if you have heard about it. It's a court ruling that says we uh, uh, cannot have any nitrogen deposition during the building phase of uh, uh, projects. Well, as you can imagine, with such a big portfolio as ours and so, so many projects running, it means something for the projects uh, now working on, we're working on right now and uh, who are in our pipeline. 
Uh, but luckily, I have some smart colleagues who have been thinking about this and saw it coming, and they tried it out um, in the renovation of a part of a prison in Scheveningen. This is a 100-year-old uh, prison, and one of the tender criteria in the renovation was how to uh, uh, do the renovation with the lowest emissions possible. Um, so in that way, we challenged the market, and they came with good ideas. Um, Though you can, it is challenging, quite challenging uh, with such an old building and such a specific function because, uh, for example, the walls of a prison, they really need to be thick concrete in order to prevent an outbreak going. Um, so luckily, the, the partner we, we selected on this project uh, had a good idea not making the traditional walls out of traditional concrete as we were used to, but using different materials meeting the same requirements and being more green. So uh, this project shows our organization, but also the rest of the Netherlands, that building with low emissions is possible, that you can ask it out in the market, and that uh, the building uh, parties in the Netherlands can deliver. So hopefully uh, um, many projects of ours, but also of others, will follow, and uh, we can build without nitrogen depositions very soon. Um, it is not only in our uh, built, uh, buildings that we are working on sustainability, as we do that as well on our lands, uh, as I taught in the, told in the beginning. And uh, we do so because we are asked to do so. In the climate agreement of 2019, uh, it is said that the central government as well need to, pay, need to play a big part in the energy transition and need to make their lands available for energy transition if possible. And now we have Minister Jette who is um, uh, really speeding things up. So that means we are, uh, we're working on this aspect as well. Um, but as you can imagine, land owned by the central government already has a function. We don't have it because we just like to have a lot of land. Um, many land is owned by the Ministry of Defense. They have their practice locations there. We have a big agricultural portfolio, as I told before. Um, nature, uh, land uh, used by, for nature. And, we, and the national infrastructure is owned by the government, as well as the Delta Works. So um, making renewable energy on locations already having a function and already having a quite important function isn't that easy. It's quite challenging. Uh, last year, we learned that especially the lands uh, um, owned by Rijkswaterstaat, so national infrastructure, is best suited for this task. And in order to get these projects rolling, we have to work closely together with Rijkswaterstaat, with local municipalities, and also with the grip, grid operators in order to get uh, uh, the project connected to the electricity grid. Our role as RVB in these projects is to select, select and contract the party who will develop the solar park or wind farm. And um, in order to do so, we have to be keen that the project is doable and feasible for these parties. So uh, we need all the uh, wishes, requirements, priorities of all the parties we meet during the project development phase together into a contract or into uh, rules for the building pyramids or plans or the zoning plan. Uh, and um, our role then is to put it on the market and hopefully find a party who can uh, create, uh, create the, the solar park. So we're keen on the overall quality of the project. Um, now getting back to the question, if I could create Europe's first and longest solar highway, I would definitely do or my priority would be. Shoes, who has an idea? What would you do if you were working on a project like this? Max. Yeah, my, uh, I don't know exactly what I would definitely do. Yeah, I can get a Mm -hmm. My priority, would, I think, mostly would be maintaining green. Because I think if you place all those solar panels next to the highway, also the greenery there like vanishes, so you have to think of a solution to keep that green. Good point. Good point. Um, 
We chose for the locations near, near the highways, uh, or maybe I should repeat what you said. Mock said, um, yeah, I definitely would look at the greenery and keep the land as well uh, uh, of good quality and green. Um, and that is something we, we definitely ha keep in mind during our projects. Um, first of all, we chose for the land close to the, to the highways because the, those lands have less nature value than other uh, pieces of land in the Netherlands, so the nature value isn't that good, but still, uh, you don't want the land to be completely dried out after 25 years of solar park laying on top of it. And actually, Mark, last year, he did a tender where one of the criteria was the least coverage of the soil, so there would be still uh, coming a lot of light, air, rain on the soil and would keep its quality and its aliveness. Um, and actually a party uh, uh, won that tender who thought about um, a solar tracker, so solar panels that were moving with the light and the solar panels itself were made of transparent, uh, transparent, um, uh, transparent solar panels, bifacials they call it. Uh, in order to keep a lot of light coming to the to the ground, so it's definitely something we take with us in the project. Anyone else? Ooh, difficult question. I think yes. Keeping in mind all the urban debris that comes from highways, and then air pollution and lead and stuff like that. And and how do you keep that in mind? The the pollution that comes from the highways. Uh -huh. I know that there's a lot of like sand sediments next to highways uh -huh. uh, that can reduce the efficiency of solar panels. Yeah. So there comes a lot of pollution from the highways and that has an effect of on the efficiency of the solar panels. It also have an, has another effect and that is on Rijkswaterstaat. Because if you have very dirty solar panels, you have to clean them twice a year or maybe three or four times a year, that means you have to get to the location. And the location next to the highway, it isn't something you just bike to and you get there with your uh, cleaning cloth and start cleaning the, the panels. You really have to make good uh, um, um, agreements with Rijkswaterstaat in order to be there and be able to clean. So yes, that, that makes it quite difficult uh, in, all right, we want to have a lot of solar panels next to the road, but how do we get there? How do we keep them clean? And is that something we should want or not? Yeah, good, good point. Anyone else? What is, uh, then I'll, I'll, just, uh, I'll just tell something uh, about the projects we do, because what is also a challenge is the electricity grid. Electricity grid in general is a problem in the Netherlands, uh, especially when looking at the energy transition and the need for more renewable energy in our country uh, makes it very difficult uh, um, uh, to get the grid upgraded for, for all the questions we have, the use of energy and the deliverance of uh, um, uh, green energy. So that's why in our projects we always work together with the grid operators in order to get the best solution possible to get the project plugged on the electricity grid. Um, another uh, aspect we're taking with us is working together with the inhabitants and the local communities because, of course, they have an idea about their highway and the way it should look like. So we really try to uh, um, uh, invite them for the participation po uh, trajectories, have them thinking with us about the design, but also about the uh, more financial ben benefits that uh, come from the project and can land in the local uh, community. Um, so, for example, I'm working on the Drentse Zonderoute A37. This is a project in the province of Drenthe. It is a 20, uh, 42 kilometer highway running through, through three municipalities, province of Drenthe, and uh, there are two grid operators in the area working. And um, we hopefully can get a solar park uh, working there, which can provide energy for 46,000 households. And here we have been working on a zoning plan, uh, very uh, um, um, uh, um, big, well, yeah, big zoning plan, thick zoning plan, uh, because we put a build qualiteitsplan in it with a lot of spatial requirements 
for the solar park and aesthetical requirements for the solar park. And why did we do so? Because here we had this extensive participation trajectory with local inhabitants thinking with us, how should the, the solar park look like? And they said, okay, yes, we want this solar park, but it has to definitely blend in the surroundings. So they didn't want uh, the black bluish solar panels. They said, we want to have colored solar panels, which suit the landscape surrounding it. So we have uh, solar panels in green, more yellowish orange colors meeting uh, the style of the landscape. And they wanted to have one fluent line of solar panels and not just bits and pieces everywhere next to the next to the highway. And that is what we incorporated in the zoning plan and in the, the thick built qualitätsplan. Um, then we've been working together with uh, uh, grid operators to get the electricity grid ready for such a big solar park. And hopefully that will be done in 2027 because we, we are planning that the, uh, the, the park can be realized in 2028. So it's, when it's realized, it can directly be plugged in uh, to the electricity grid. So that asks a lot of planning uh, on our side to get everything suited together. And here we've been working on a participation policy as well, because in the climate agreement, we agreed that local communities must benefit from electricity projects. And it is even said that 50% of projects like these should be in the hands of local communities. That is quite a lot, especially when talking about such a big project. We'll think about maybe yourself or your mom and dad owning a part of a, a solar park. Not everybody is up to that. Uh, but still, it is an ambition we have in the Netherlands in general. Um, uh, so we incorporated the participation policy into our tender criteria and we hope to select uh, the party who is willing to uh, work as closely together as possible with the local community and who can offer the biggest part of the solar park to the local community. So I'm really curious how that's going to work out. Something we're working on right now is the first time in the Netherlands we're doing something like this. Um, so it makes it, in my opinion, uh, very exciting to do so. And we're planning for tender in 2024, 2025 probably. So um, hopefully I've shown you uh, that projects like these ask for the com combining a lot of different priorities and a lot of different requirements, wishes, and demands. Um, that makes it sometimes uh, uh, challenging, uh, but also that is uh, what I like about my job. I like it uh, working on something that is um, uh, contributing to a better and cleaner future of our country. Um, it is something uh, that, th that the projects I'm working on are uh, um, uh, contributing to the 35 terawatt hour of green and renewable energy uh, we, need to, we need to have before 2030. So, um, that's something that makes me really exciting. What makes me more exciting is that we do so in a smart way and we do so on smart locations, locations close to the infrastructure, as I've shown you, in order to keep the rest of our country green and open or available for other functions, such as housing or climate adaptation. So, um, well, hopefully you've given, I've given you a, uh, an, a perspective on what I do, what we do as a central government real estate agency. And I hope I've shown you we, we've, we do a quite a, a lot of different things. Uh, for example, me, I'm standing here doing this presentation today. Tomorrow I'm around the table with the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, talking about the 35 new projects to come. And only yesterday I was in the selection committee of our new traineeship uh, which will start again in March this year, and maybe interesting for some of you, will start again in two years from now. Um, so if you're interested in um, working with our organization, traineeships, internships, you can always look at werkenvoornederland.nl or our own website. Um, I'm curious if there are any questions now for me. Yes? I do have one question. Yeah.
Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Um, well, my question, now you talked a lot about solar panels. Yeah. Uh, do you think that this is the best way to uh, gain renewable energy? or And if so, do you think putting, yeah, placing them in infrastructure is the best way? Or do you think maybe yeah, like at water or at different locations would be yeah. better to get like all the energy we need? Um, I think um, solar panels on land is just a small part of our, uh, uh, the energy we need as a country. So yes, the, so, uh, the windmills we place on the, on the North Sea, on, at sea, they, they have a bigger stake. And uh, the windmills we have placed uh, on water, like in the IJsselmeer, there are some windmills as well. Um, they also have, they re, re, uh, uh, give more energy than the solar plan panels we are planning for. But we have to do everything. We have to put them on all the roofs. Uh, we need uh, indeed uh, solar energy from our land and from sea. Yes. Any other questions? Yes. Hydrogen. Um, we don't develop hydrogen ourselves. It isn't the, a goal of the central government. We do want to uh, uh, facilitate. So if there are hydrogen pro projects interested in locations we have, we would definitely talk uh, uh, with, this, with those parties. And what we see is, pro uh, for example, the project I thought about in the beginning, uh, the big floating solar uh, on, uh, and, and it's on the mass flux, so Rotterdam Harbor. Well, there is nitrogen, uh, nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, sorry. <laughs> There's a hydrogen plant uh, being built close to that location. So probably the energy coming from our location will go to uh, uh, the hydrogen plant there. But it isn't something we're really st steering on or, or, or aiming for. If we want to facilitate that, yes. Yes. Ooh, that's, this is a, a, a good question. Um, the question is about the, uh, the export and import of energy uh, um, from the Netherlands. Um, that is something, as the central government real estate organization, it, we, we don't do anything with that. We just um, uh, make uh, lands available for the production of renewable energy. Uh, I believe that the Ministry of Economic Affairs, together with Tenet, uh, so our national grid operator, is working on things like that. And we're just, we're just like a small, a small uh, uh, organization in the big chain of uh, energy transition in Europe, in, in that sense, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Ah, good question. Uh, the relation between the Rijksbouwmeester and Rijksvastgoedbedrijf. Rijksbouwmeester um, is, a, is a specialty within our organization. He is part of the organization, but he definitely can do uh, uh, his, own, his own thing. Um, what we do, um, do is that with big uh, renovations or with big building projects, we ask the team of the Rijksbouwmeester to uh, uh, look at the design or the, the landscaping. Uh, so they're more, they, they're actually an advisor for the Netherlands, but a special advisor for us as well. Yeah, that's their role. Anyone else? Well, uh, if there are no further questions, then I think we're gonna end the lecture. I wanna thank you all for coming. I wanna thank Tara, of course, for the interesting lecture. Um, if you still need my future points, you can uh, scan them at the back, so uh, at the top of the trapezaal. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Maybe there are still some sandwiches or drinks, so uh, get some if you need. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you.